Of course, social media platforms like Twitter were alive with Mr Yunapingu's name and image from the start. And both Twitter and the ABC were at the centre of another major fracas the week before last, which contains lessons for journalists everywhere. Are you still saying that you won't comment on individual tweets? There are dozens and dozens of them showing complete and utter partiality, including some quite offensive tweets. I understand your qualms about the appointment, Senator. At issue was the appointment of veteran Fairfax journalist Russell Skelton, to be editor of its new fact-checking unit, which the ABC says will... scrutinise the factual accuracy of claims made by politicians, business, unions and special interest groups to produce compelling content across all ABC News platforms and programs. The fact-checking unit's editor will... lead and manage the unit to deliver engaging content that builds a reputation for accuracy, impartiality and clarity. Now, before we go further, a declaration. When the jobs were advertised in March, I applied for the post of presenter of the fact-checking unit, a different job. A few weeks later, and before Russell Skelton's appointment was announced, I withdrew my application for personal reasons. That episode has nothing to do with the matter at hand. On the face of it, Russell Skelton is admirably qualified for the job of editor. The ABC summarised his career. He is a highly regarded reporter and contributing editor to the Age newspaper. Russell has worked in top positions at Fairfax and News Limited. He has been business editor of the Melbourne Herald. The problem is that as contributing editor for the Age, Russell Skelton was an active user of Twitter. Senator Abetz, or more likely his staff, had been trawling through his Twitter feed and didn't like what he'd found. Can we believe that Mr Skelton will be impartial when checking the public statement of politicians yeah. when, just last July, he tweeted Abbott's extremism on display? Also about Mr Abbott, Again, no statesman with no style. Mr Skelton tweeted that Mr Abbott was revealed to be a shameless opportunist that he is and he was red-faced, Windsor nailed him to the floor. Abbott, now a liability, a proverbial albatross. I have here more than a dozen examples, more than a dozen examples of Mr Skelton's tweets denigrating Liberals such as Senator Brander, Scott Morrison, Joe Hockey. So how can you credibly maintain that Mr Skelton is impartial and a suitable choice to be the ABC's fact checker? It was a devastating attack that lasted more than half an hour, and it produced some withering criticism in the press from those who'd never had much time for the ABC. The fact-checking unit's reputation for impartiality is thus stillborn. Management has blundered. The coalition will remember. And from columnists who usually defend it. Abetz's aim was obviously to suggest Skelton's appointment is a bad look, and for some outsider neutrals, he may have succeeded. Did anybody brief Scott about Skelton's tweets prior to his estimates hearing appearance? Who made the decision to appoint Skelton and were they aware of his social media history? Both excellent questions which we put to the ABC. It has declined to answer them, citing the confidentiality of the selection process. But you have to think the answer was no. If he'd been briefed, Mark Scott might have been able to point out that Russell Skelton has not always been flattering about the Gillard government. Too many broken promises to run the Hootia Trust line. Voters won't buy it. PM's inept in prosecuting her case. And that not all his more pungent tweets have been aimed at the coalition. Early last year, Skelton tweeted this about Kevin Rudd. He is a sociopath. Nobody knows. Not even Kevin. And he doesn't appear to be a fan of Greens leader Christine Milne. Christine Milne's position untenable on Breakfast News. Sooner see people drown than compromise. Uh, Well, no, on second thoughts, it wouldn't have been helpful for Mark Scott to quote those. As it was, all he could do was repeat over and over that... Mr Skelton was not an employee of us at the time. Which is obviously true, and that... Mr Skelton is a very uh, experienced, award-winning journalist. Which is also true. Senator Abetz chose to challenge that too, quoting Media Watch. There's a feature on our website dealing with what we have and haven't said about Russell Skelton's journalism. 
Suffice to say that we did not endorse the most serious allegations made against him. The ABC's head of current affairs has told Media Watch... Mr Skelton was appointed on his professional track record over three decades as a journalist and editor. The accusation that his work shows political partiality is unsupportable. Well, if his work does not include his tweets, that's fair comment. But though the vast majority of Russell Skelton's tweets are not political, some of those that are do display a disdain for individual politicians, most of them on the coalition side. Mark Scott argued this to Senator Abetz. Journalists have views, journalists have perspectives, journalists vote. The test is not what their views are, their perspectives are, how they vote. The test is how they do their work. Mm. And so the test... And how they tweet. And that, surely, is the point. These days, a journalist's Twitter stream is part of his work, or in marketing terms, of his personal brand. Fairfax staff clearly have more latitude than those who work for the ABC. But the Washington Post, for example, tells its reporters this. When posting content online, ask yourself, would this posting make a reader question my ability to do my job objectively and professionally? If so, don't post it. Well, too late for that advice now. But should a few indiscreet tweets disqualify a candidate who is otherwise well-equipped to do an important job? Everyone will have their own view about that. This is the ABC's. There is a basic principle of freedom of thought and expression here. A successful career in a range of senior journalistic roles that includes a social media presence and voice should not preclude an individual from being considered for employment at the ABC. The problem for the ABC is that this is a very particular job. Personally, I don't doubt that Russell Skelton would do it well. But what matters is not what I think but what the coalition will say the first time the fact-checking unit finds one of them has told a porky. How much better if those tweets had never been posted?